Hi. Hello, you. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Did you put the phone? That's better. <laughs> okay, beautiful. I just, thank you. I just thought otherwise the audience would have to struggle. In <laughs> <laughs> very fair. Okay. Yes. What should I cool. look at? I'll look at, I guess that, just want to make sure I don't. How's that? No, Again? That, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yes. Yes, first of all, thank you for being um, my guest on my podcast. Uh, it's really lovely. I've been watching your posts and they've been really, really enriching with um, things you do, specifically you focus on narcissistic abuse as such. And uh, I was uh, looking at your profile, you do also lead the Magnolia uh, Healing Center, as you call it. Uh, you are That's a correct. psychologist um, and uh, you have plenty of experience, especially in your personal life. So we have the wonderful Yitz Epstein here, and we're talking about uh, narcissistic abuse and narcissism about your life. So if you feel as, as long as you're comfortable talking about it, um, because I thought um, the thing which has intrigued me is, which I wanted to have you on my show, I always look for extraordinary personalities who have gone through some form of different experiences in their life and have then created um, extraordinary things out of their own experiences. Wherever it's coming from business, wherever it's coming from personal life, whatever it is. And uh, with your story, it touched me really personally because I have um, gone through narcissistic abuse and various other abuses as well. But uh, I could some, in some way or form connect to you uh, which was nice because I thought we could just have our organic chat about it. I don't know if you watched any of my podcasts, but I like to just interact with my guests in a very organic way, in an organic manner. I ask questions as we're going along. Feel free to ask me questions as well. And, you know, just to bring a bit of light into this um, term as such as well, because a lot of people don't actually realise how serious that could be what characteristics it has and how much of the impact that could have on the other person who has to go through these, um, uh, you know, these attacks uh, of, or, or attitudes um, of, of these individual people. For sure. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Shafak, for having me be on. It's such an honor to be here. I, I will do a, uh, have a slight correction on what you said. Everything was almost correct. I am not a psychologist. Um, Maybe one day, um, I'm just a life coach. I do have my marriage right. and family therapy uh, degree. But yes, yeah, so I have been in this space for about four years. And right. I've, I've been dealing with narcissistic abuse my entire life because of the way I was raised, the family dynamics I was in. So I was kind of uh, uh, pushed into this space. You know, I, I wouldn't say that I uh, necessarily chose it. Maybe it chose me. Um, but I, I feel called to, uh, to share my story and share my struggles, but also share some insights that I've learned uh, yeah. You know, and I'm so happy that you that you that you are appreciating my content. I put a lot of love and work into those posts. Uh, you know, and, and the goal I have is to uh, to give people a voice because I find that, you know, as you are, I'm sure aware, is that um, you know when you're in this space, when you have been wounded by a narcissist, when you're in, in a narcissistically abusive relationship, and even after you've left, uh, you feel very misunderstood, uh, and it's incredibly powerful and healing to be understood. So I do believe that that's half the battle, understanding uh, what's going on, having contacts, having awareness, and then understanding what it means to heal. And that is the aim of why I do what I do. So uh, again, thank you for having me and, and appreciating my work. That's a lovely introduction which you gave us. Thank you for correcting me. At some point on your profile, I've read that you have done a psychological degree, which is why I called you a psychologist. So you haven't done a degree in that field? I haven't. I used to work for a, a doctor who, who uh, perhaps she was the one who uh, had the degree that you're referring to. Um, right. I, like I said, I have my, 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 my therapy degree, my marriage and family therapy, I haven't been right. licensed. Um, so you aren't wrong there with the degree. But, um, you know, the way I see it is my degree is in life school. You know, mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've been through the school of life in many ways. That's right. And, you know, to me, that's so valuable um, because when I come to somebody and they have life experience, uh, I almost find that more valuable, at least for me. Uh, to have that relatability. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that a lot of the information that I know while I do my research and I do talk to people and do learn from others is from my own experiences. 
So, uh, you know, I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always trying to learn new things. And I hope that uh, just today, even with this interview, I'll learn some more about what it means to heal. And that's wonderful. I mean, we can learn from each other. Uh, it's never, sure. never wrong to learn. And I am a psychologist, but um, I have gone through, as I mentioned, through various forms of abuse and trauma and also had a narcissistic uh, relationship. Uh, yeah. what I was going through but uh, at the same time I think uh, you're, you're very right and I believe that as well I think that there's, there's a lot of therapists or coaches about but um, you can only put your full heart into something your full compassion if you have gone through some form of trauma uh, yourself whatever it is in your life because that's the only way to be able to relate to the other person otherwise if you only gain academic knowledge and I'm not um, discrediting that in any way you know by all means they have a lot of knowledge a lot of intellect but the personal experience as you said learning from lived experiences learning from other people who have actually perceived and experienced various emotions uh, that's a very valuable lesson to have especially yeah. when you have gone through yourself and then find someone who can actually make sense out of that, or you find sure. you get the epiphany of you know having sense. A light bulb moment comes up, and yeah. you suddenly start understanding why you're behaving in a certain way, why you're feeling certain emotions, why you're going through certain things, and why you may become a magnet to certain type of personality, and how you have to develop your self awareness on. Um, just safeguarding yourself and protecting yourself and how absolutely. you heal you know absolutely and, 100% and, and that's, that's how I think um, the more you grow this understanding I mean I had to grow uh, emotional intelligence emotional maturity in that to understand actually what was happening and why it was happening and how I could actually manage these things and I think that's why I wanted to hear a bit more about your story because it was it was really touching in a personal way where I thought you know a lot of things I can relate to that because I have come through that path and I have come through the other end but it would be really nice to know for the audience as well how severe these things can be how much of the impact that can have and what it actually means for someone Absolutely. to be a narcissist because a lot of people don't actually realize what it actually means so would you like sure. to just shed a bit of light onto that and i can um you know uh, respond to uh, respond to you as as, as as we're going along yeah i'd love to i am very open about my story uh you know i find that by relating my story even though at times it's, it's personal uh, but people people need that and and, and i needed that so uh, absolutely i'd be happy to go into it and i was raised uh, an extremely orthodox jewish home i was one of eight uh and uh, so 10 people in a home and obviously a lot of people and a lot of uh, a lot of our needs emotional needs were neglected um parents who were overwhelmed uh, in pain uh and just had their own self-absorptions for whatever reason uh and as a result uh, we were heavily neglected emotionally um but not only that that was only part of it. It was our, you know, specifically, uh, you know, my own mother um, was just unable to uh, see us for who we are. Uh, in essence, she was self-absorbed, selfish, narcissistic. And as a result, she was not interested necessarily in, in our needs. And it became about her. It became about her pain, her wounds, uh, her self-soothing, and her trying to essentially use whatever she can to soothe her pain. Uh, and um, as children, we're, we're, we're helplessly dependent on our parents. And we want to please our parents because our parents are our world. They're our God, so to speak, our source. So, you know, as a, as a naive, innocent little child, I did what I could to uh, please her. Uh, and uh, it was never enough because at the end of the day, it's not my role as a child to please her. Uh, but obviously, I didn't know that. And it, it created incredible wounding because not only was I forced to abandon my own self needs, which were going neglected by her. Uh, and by my parents, but ultimately I was then forced to be there for her and uh, be right. uh, a soothing agent for her pain. Uh, and this is a narcissistic parent, but you know, narcissistic abusers are not necessarily parents all the time. Oftentimes mm -hmm. they're relationship partners, they're intimate partners, their bosses, their coworkers, they could be anybody. Uh, and the reason why we have a hard time identifying a narcissist is because they don't necessarily have a sign on their head that says, mm -hmm. hey, I'm a narcissist. They usually have a very just uh, a disturbed personality 
where they have developed a false sense of self and have rejected their authentic sense of self because they feel so poorly about it uh, or because it's underdeveloped, malnourished, and they have rejected that part of themselves and, and sort of created a false illusory identity. And they go around the world pretending like this is them. Uh, and because it's false, it can shape shift, it can become different things, and it becomes hard to identify. They do what's called mirroring. Uh, which is where they sort of reflect back to you parts of yourself that that uh, that you like and appreciate and then gain your trust. And then you don't believe that this person is conning you or deceiving you, but in reality, they are in the worst way. So I have a lot of experience with uh, with this growing up. And then, you know, obviously, as an adult, I was extremely wounded and I uh, manifested for myself dysfunctional relationships because that's the only mm -hmm. way I knew how to relate to the world. So when somebody came along and was maybe healthy or or was good for me, uh, for my mental health, I, I wasn't familiar with that, and therefore I pushed it away. And I was only attracted to and attracted people uh, who were dysfunctional, abusive, narcissistic, or codependent. Uh, obviously, I had my own tendencies of, of narcissistic uh, abuse, so it was very, uh, very maladaptive. And obviously, I did not have the terms to explain and describe what I was suffering from. I just knew that I was in an incredible, impossible amount of pain, uh, shame, feeling hopeless, helpless, uh, feeling alone. And so it wasn't until uh, later on when I got myself into a relationship with somebody who was pretty healthy uh, that she started to reflect back that I was not well. And I knew intuitively uh, that I was in fact not but well. Not, and, yeah, yes, you're back. So sorry. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so I, okay, so I knew intuitively that, that I was uh, not well and that I needed to, to work on myself and heal. So, you know, when I decided to finally uh, go inward and, and study myself and get to know myself, uh, I found that there was just incredible damage and I started to get clarity on what that damage was and how that damage from my childhood and from my past was affecting my present day. Uh, and I went on what I call as a healing journey uh, and to self-discover, to become self-aware, to heal, to get to know myself, to care about myself uh, and become my own parent and eventually to develop a healthy sense of self uh, and, and to be able to connect to, and relate to the world uh, and to myself in a healthy way. Uh, and, and that's really what I do uh, with my podcast and some of the content that you've seen on, on LinkedIn is, is really the, um, I'm sharing my healing journey with other people. You know, I'm not forcing my, uh, my opinions on other people. I resonate. I do a lot of resonation, which is saying, here are my thoughts. Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, how would you entertain this concept? I'm very open to learning and expanding because, uh, you know, I don't know it all. Uh, but there are things I'm pretty confident about, but I'm always expanding, growing and learning. And I do believe that healing is synonymous with growth. And the more I share myself, the more vulnerable I get, which was, is very scary, especially if you've been hurt before. You don't want to be vulnerable. You might get hurt again. But the courage to be vulnerable again and learn and grow has been a saving grace. And as a result, I've, I've turned all that pain, all that suffering, and all that struggle into, uh, into uh, the ability to thrive. And that is, that is a very, very beautiful way of saying this. I mean, thank you for sharing your story. It takes, I know it takes a lot of courage to come out and openly talk about it and I can see in some ways you're still um, you know going through this healing journey which is sure. completely okay because um, we everybody takes a different pathway a different timeline to heal as such and feel better within themselves and grow this um, self-confidence, grow this self-care, which is very, very difficult at some point because when you have gone through various forms of traumas, like you're explaining there, then uh, to have this self-validation or to, to feel it's okay to think about yourself, it's a very, very difficult task to achieve uh, without feeling any guilt because you're always wanting sure. to please somebody else. Um, and and that's a that's a very very lovely journey which you're explaining. I can very much relate to that. It took me a long time to come to this point. Uh, although I'm also still developing as such, but I have reached a level where I can understand these things. And I think that's where all this self discovery and involvement in life starts uh, or begins or develops when you start um, understanding embracing as you beautifully said you know embracing yeah. your pains your experiences because that's the only way to move forward and make sense of that and then to apply that on other people to heal them and help them as well uh, you know yeah. uh, because it provides us uh, the 
same time when you're helping the other person to heal or to understand their journey of suffering, at the same time, it's reflecting back to you and healing you as well. It's 100%. making you feel better, better and it enriches you as well. Being a part of someone's progression in life, that's just a beautiful thing to have. I'm a yeah, natural, I'm a natural, I'm a natural empath. I wonder if uh, you could relate to these kind of attributes as well, because I know being a natural empath for me, which I had to understand as well, I am a magnet of disastrous people. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, uh. people of you know having that narcissistic attitudes, psychopathic attitudes, all these kind of. Um, people who pray for uh, their victims and wanting to fulfill them, their needs. Um, because as you said, it's the insecurity which somebody has and the false perception of a person or characteristics which they then put up to mask their insecurities, to mask right. what they perceive as the weakness which they can't overcome. And then in order to overcome that, they have to dominate over the other person and right. um, make sure that they feel a certain sense of entitlement over over the world, um, uh, while um, actually creating a, a kind of false facade um, to the outer world. So to your inner circle, you will show your real self, your power, uh, what you want to dominate, your entitlement. Um, but uh, to to the outside world, you're always or you want to maintain that picture of being the good person, being the healer, being the the, the wise person, being the nice yep. person. That's a, oh, yeah. that's, that's a lot of um, attributes um, which or characteristics which, which a narcissist actually concludes. And that is why people get often fooled by these people and cannot actually spot or understand if that person who is in the imminent circle of this narcissist actually right. suffers um, because they can't see the, the real picture of, of what is exactly happening. Do you agree with that? I do. Absolutely. I mean, I've experienced it, so uh, I can say that firsthand. Um, and I, I think you, like myself, you know, empath, I've heard is the term, just extremely sensitive energetically. Um, I, I have heard, and I don't know, but I've heard that some people aren't necessarily empaths. They're just so traumatized that they're forced to develop these skills. Um, but I do believe that there is this concept of, um, of, of, of an empath, and, and I believe I am that. And, you know, it's, it's, I believe that people like ourselves are extremely uh, sensitive to energies, and, and, and we have this eternal level of compassion and forgiveness and empathy. And, um, you know, narcissistic abusers uh, see that as an opportunity to take advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's on us to, to set boundaries with these skills, because we can very easily get warped into relationships where we are caretakers. Um, that's one of the life lessons that we have to learn is, is saying no and, and standing up for ourselves and setting boundaries, which we, we struggle with because we we see the oneness, I think, of all humanity. And we just want everyone to get along with the people yeah. pleasers, we're the, yeah. we're the healers of the world. So yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely uh, agree with that. And, you know, narcissistic abuse, I have found a way to uh, create a, a positive spin uh, on relationships that are narcissistic. And, and I do believe that perspective on these relationships is everything. If you see it as a disaster and trauma and you know just a waste of time and energy, you know it, it, it's very gloomy and it's very dark. But if you can see these relationships as a as a school, as a life lesson to be yeah. learned, there are some powerful life lessons that narcissistic abusers come into your life to teach you. Most notably, uh, I think humility, I think gratitude, self love, self acceptance, self care, boundaries, uh, things like that. So, as a result of being raised in a home that was narcissistic and attracting these abusers into my life. Uh, instead of getting uh, just playing the victim role, which very easily could have could have played, and, and I did at some point, some points in my life, and many people do, uh, I became the sort of a, a student of of myself to learn about okay, what are they teaching me? Uh, and as a result, not only did this experience not destroy me and break me, they've actually uh, propelled me to great spiritual, emotional, and psychological you know awareness. So I'm I'm grateful, and and I'm I've reached this point. This is a, it's a journey to get here. Uh, because for the longest time, I did not feel this way, but I've reached a point where I'm actually grateful for my experiences because not only did they not hurt, uh, break me, which they certainly hurt me, uh, they, they allowed me to become the person I am today and, and, and set me up for continuous growth. So, um, so yes, I do believe that empaths are, are you know, get warped into these relationships, 
but I don't think they are necessarily a bad thing. They actually are in essence, a way to challenge you to grow to your full potential. I absolutely agree with that. And uh, I live by the same kind of philosophy. You're embracing actually these experiences, um, being a part of your life because you can never right. change your past. So right. if, as long as long you're fighting against them or you're suppressing them, you're actually making your um, life harder because you're not evolving, you're not developing, you're not progressing, right. you're just, just, just being held in the same um, cycle, uh, which is dark, which is difficult, which is full of suffering, which, uh, as you said, right. being the victim or feeling as the victim. Uh, once you step out outside of that and start embracing these things and seeing these experiences as who they are and embracing yeah. the things which you've learned from them as you said beautifully that's when you can progress because that's when you start right. building your presence you start actually building the foundation of your of your future as well right. and then um, projecting the goodness what you've learned from these um, things um, as a knowledge to other people to overcome certain things or to prevent um, certain suffering things and and that's a lovely thing um, you said it very rightfully that that this is the progression which you have which you have to develop over time you can't do that imminently as such it takes time because your right. understanding takes time your intellect takes yep. time your you know your brain needs to cope with these things um, then to progress process these things and then yeah. to come to terms with that. And um, sure. yes, uh, I absolutely agree. If you embrace all these things, you're actually quite grateful be, uh, of, of who you are, who you have become, and you may not have become or lead, being a leader in this kind of position and helping others uh, coming away or um, you know, healing from, from narcissistic abuse. Um, if you hadn't gone through that journey, that's not to say it's excused as such what somebody um, else um, uh, done to you or the, the behavior of somebody else, but um, it's just the experience which you learn and which you then embrace and then develop. And I often say yeah. to people that, um, you know, and the main thing is about how to manage these things. You embrace these experiences and you, then you start managing these things um, while you're walking alongside them. You're not, right. um, you're not actually dismissing them. You're actually yeah. walking alongside them, letting them enter your life and leave your life again, but not letting, yeah. um, letting them control your life. You are yeah. in charge of your own life. Yeah. of your of your own well-being i love that yeah i agree you know and it's it's the way i see relationships from my understanding of what i've come to uh, uh learn is that relationships are designed to help you grow you know relation, relationships are not designed necessarily to be just fun and games and just playful and there there is an element to that that's important but i see that uh you know anybody who enters my life whoever is in front of me is a growth partner uh the crossing guard uh, my child uh, my partner, my friends, and even my clients. So, you know, to me, it's like, if I, if I enter into that space with a vulnerability uh, and, a, and, a, and a curiosity of what is this coming to teach me, suddenly I have taken all the power and given it back to myself. You know, if I say that there's nothing here to learn and I don't want to be here and I, I don't like this situation and I hate this person, what I've done is I've given them the power because now yeah. I'm helpless and I'm being kind of, so I, I think that when it comes to, to feeling powerlessness and shame after abuse, Part of the way we take our power back is we own the narrative and we own yeah. the 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 uh, our story and we own uh, our reaction. So uh, absolutely, and 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 I've learned so much. And and what's cool is that like there's so much more to learn. It's infinite the amount of uh, beauty. And every time you learn a life lesson, you refine your character. And and a, and a, a, a refined character is the way I see it. The most fulfilling thing is a human being. So that's why there is a gift in the pain, in the darkness, in the struggle. You just gotta keep going you got to keep fighting to get to that place where you can appreciate the gifts yeah. um and when you do it's just it's magical <laughs> absolutely i totally agree with that and what what the good thing about it is that um you know going through all of these things and having all the empathetic um characteristics which you develop or you may be a natural empath like i believe i am um you actually 
can start um, feel feeling um, the other person's emotion, which is which is so yep. fantastic about that. You know, you you would have noticed that yourself, especially when you're when you're going to see a client, you enter a room, you can um, absorb that emotion, you can absorb that expression, and then act towards that because you're coming with this curiosity, you're coming with a willingness to learn to enrich yourself within that situation and then and then see what you can make out of that and how you can help that person to evolve and progress is that right 100 percent, 100 percent. you can you can uh really learn so much about yourself and again the awareness you get and the clarity you know i believe that life is beautiful i think that there are so many beautiful things and so many moments i also believe that how you perceive it is a choice. Yeah. So if you're going to look at life from a, from a, from, by the way, when you're in pain, it's hard to see life as beautiful and fun. So it almost, uh, when I say that and someone's in pain, it almost sounds like I'm mocking the pain, but yeah. it's not the case because when you're in pain, yeah, your, your, your perceptions are going to be distorted. You're going to have a dark outlook on life, but that's not the end. If you keep going and you change your perspective and, and most of healing, the way I see it is changing your perspective. You know, somebody comes with a problem, is it a problem or is it the perspective of the yeah. problem? So oftentimes it's our thinking, it's our perspective. It's the narrative that we give something that creates the pain. So it's also the narrative and the perspective that gives it the healing. So, so much is how we view it and the awareness of it and the clarity. Once you can see things in that context, the very same thing that was traumatic and painful and devastating and heartbreaking becomes a beautiful thing, which is such a fascinating concept. That's right, that's right. You said it so beautifully. What I wanted to know actually, uh, when you went through this transition of going through unhealthy relationships as such, if you don't mind talking about that, and then came across um, this person who you're happy with, who's actually a healthy person, healthy character, who was, um, you know, adding to your healthy mental well-being. Um, how did that transition come along? Because you would have, as you mentioned earlier, rejected actually maybe even good people coming into your life, entering your life prior to that. Where was that transition period? There must have been prior to, you know, you realizing um, that uh, or through your partner that you have a problem or you need to go through a certain process in in healing in um, finding reasons for your, for your behavior. Um, was there something internally which was working inside you where you thought, um, let me try out this healthy relationship. It sounds different than I've ever come across before. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I, you know, it's interesting because I knew intuitively that I wanted a healthy relationship, but I also didn't have the skill set to have a healthy relationship. Um, so when I found somebody who was healthy and had healthy patterns, I was attracted to that. Uh, part of the healing was showing up to that relationship and just showing up with my dysfunctional patterns and admitting them to myself and then having them corrected with this person, uh, which right. is why I feel that, that so many people would get healing and can get healing out of relationships that, uh, that are with partners who uh, create that space for you to, to correct it. In fact, I do believe there's a, there's a vital element to having a relationship that is growing. And even if both partners, let's say, have these wounds and have these patterns, by being open and vulnerable and creating a space where we talk about our struggles instead of hiding them or shutting them down and being ashamed of them, it actually can heal you. So, yeah. you know, healing happens in the context of a relationship, um, whether it's the coach, the therapist, the friend, the partner, the child, relationships are healing because relationships force us to confront the part of ourself that we don't want to face because they yank them out of ourselves, they pull them up to the moment, to our conscious awareness. And um, that, by that same token, relationships could also wound us because they can drag us down. So they have to potential either way. But if you find yourself in a relationship that's painful, that's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes that pain needs to come up. And the question you wanna ask yourself is, okay, can this relationship lead me to a, a place of greater health? That's absolutely right. And you said it lovely, actually. Um, that's what I wanted to know, but. That means um, there must have been some changes in you at that time when you felt this is different. Um, you know, I'm not going to reject this. Or I'm not going to be fearful about that. So you took that step to explore. And um, then, you know, it went, went quite positive about that. And that is another thing, I think, um, the acceptance of um, wanting to embrace 
um, goodness around you when it comes to you. It's also a step which, which takes a lot of people a long time. Some may never reach that point where they actually understand that it's okay to accept good things coming to you as well yeah. as, you know, anything which is bad happening, which you said earlier, that it's okay to go through pain if you have to go through that. Uh, you don't have to reject everything. Just embrace it and work with it as it comes. Right. I love that. I love that so much. You know, people who have been traumatized and abused and, and suffer from emotional dysregulation, negative emotions, they're going to have a negative core belief system, a negative self-talk. And as a result, when something good comes along, uh, they're going to, probably push it away because I'm not deserving. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Yeah. So part of accepting good things is, is, is accepting and realizing the fact that you are valuable and that you are worthy of it, but challenging the narrative that you're not. So yeah. once you dismantle the old belief system, that is really how we accept good. So I agree. Theoretically, you know, if something comes along, you want to embrace it, you know, yeah. things that are not good for you, let them go. Things that are good for you, allow them to come, but you definitely want to get back to that programming and, and understand what programming is pushing away the good things so you can align yeah. with it. Um, but I couldn't agree more. I, there's so much good to life and there's so much beauty all, around, beauty all around us that when you can finally start to pay attention to the good, yeah. uh, the good grows. So if you pay That's attention right. to the negative. So at the end of the day, no matter what you've gone through, and this is why I firmly believe that we are powerful you know, creators of our life, whatever you've gone through, you have the ability to change it based on your perspective and to nurture the good because when you do, the good gets better. Uh, the opposite is true with the negative. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I mean, I was in a 12 years narcissistic relationship. Before that, I was in a 12 years psychopathic relationship. Um, both traits are quite similar in their way, although they're very different characteristics, but um, sure. quite, quite powerful, empower, um, um, being empowered, feeling the sense of entitlement over the other person. Yeah. So I went from one to another, and, um, and the thing which transitioned in me was that, um, you know, many years ago, but you still still question yourself whether you're doing the right thing. I mean, in my case, children were involved, a lot of other things were involved cultural things were involved um so uh, i had to question myself where i'm on, on taking the right step and not making a mistake but um by developing the self-worth as, as you rightfully said and you know revaluating yourself as such that's when you get clarity only yeah. that then when you become um, clear about what is exactly happening and you start revaluating your in the situation. I mean, I'm going through at the moment still a quite difficult pathway, although I've separated um, generally uh, with that person, but due to the lockdown, we're still living in the same property and right. I'm trying to sort out um, uh, you know, the financial matters as such, but I have developed skills where I believe um, these are part of the changing um, healing journey and self-discovery yeah. as such to understand as someone who is a narcissist uh, with these characteristics and how to just avoid certain situations for instance not that I'm in fear but I'm generally quite a fearless person because of the things which I've gone through but um, uh, just to just manage them better for your mental well-being and for practical things as well. So you're uh, separating, for instance, um, certain things. You're not crossing these, this person in a way that it would create any kind of arguments or conflicts just for the sake of being able to move on at some point, you know. Um, yeah. And not that you're avoiding them on purpose because you're fearful, but just to use your brain in a better way. And uh, one of the things is also, which you may have uh, learned as well, is um, detaching a uh, narcissist from yourself takes a lot of skill. Uh, you have to use your brain in a very, very different manner to do that. Otherwise, that person will follow you for a long time and will have oh, yeah. an impact on you for a long time. So my skills, and I would like to hear that from you as well, if you can um, maybe, um, you know, have gone through these kind of things. What I've done is now I've, I've started detaching that person emotionally and practically from me. So all these yeah. needs that person felt um, they were entitled to and I must fulfill, 
I have removed myself from that. So, for instance, little things like I've stopped cooking, I've kept my starches and started keeping my things separate, um, being separated physically from that person, so not being in the same room, uh, not talking to that person much, having a limited, very limited dialogue as such, and uh, keeping my things separately. So um, that person would get the sense of, no, um, I am not going to look after that person no more. He has to do it himself. Um, right. Have you gone through similar um, skills that you had to develop in that yeah. way, or even if it's emotionally? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I'm sorry to hear about the many years that you struggled and that you're still struggling. Um, I commend that's your okay. courage. It's, uh, it's, that's, it's, that's it's okay. Amazing. Don't don't worry about it. Even as people say, um, uh, and I, I can appreciate that you're feeling sorry, but I don't want people to feel sorry because I'm quite a strong person and sure. I wouldn't have gone through this journey and embrace everything if I felt sorry for myself, or if, one, if I wanted people to feel sorry for myself. I think it's yeah. achievement in general and that's what I want to project to people as well, which is why I wanted to talk to you about and share these experiences with you. Um, that uh, it, it, it is a strength if you go through these experiences, embrace these experiences and still evolve and thrive. You know, yeah. I, I don't feel broken. I feel I'm thriving. I have a better inner life quality. I feel like since I've separated yeah. from that person, I'm talking about breakup of the relationship officially, uh, I felt despite these difficulties, despite these challenges, suddenly like I felt liberated. I couldn't even explain this kind of feeling how I felt. It was such a nice, light, joyful, happy experience and happy feeling, which I'm still feeling in many ways, which has actually yeah. kept me going to, to just to progress and thrive. It's beautiful. That's so inspiring. And uh, I feel the same way. So I totally, totally resonate. Um, and so, you know, when you're, when you're overcoming narcissism, when you're on your healing journey, you know, like I mentioned, there are skills that we want to learn. And one of those is uh, self-care and self, self-acceptance, self self-love. And part of that is saying no and setting boundaries with which will evoke guilt. You know, as empaths, we feel like we need to take care of others. If others are unhappy, yeah. then it's our, our responsibility to fix them, or I should say an unhealed empath. You know, as we become empowered empaths, uh, we, we tend to own our power and realize mm -hmm. that it's not our job to fix other people. It's not our job to mm -hmm. save other people and to uh, to you know, save them from the consequences of their own actions. So a lot of it is putting yourself first, saying no, and dealing with the, the 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 feeling of being a disappointment and feeling guilty, and not just because you feel those that way, you don't you know take down that boundary, but rather you you own that power. So I agree. I think the way you're going about it is exactly how I would. It's it's I appreciate the struggle. I have compassion and I empathize, but I will not compromise my own sense of self, my own well-being. That's on you. You know, and, and, and as you do that, you feel more uh, empowered, independent, uh, as opposed to codependent, and you attract people who, who reflect that back to you. So that's the, one of the struggles is letting go, letting go of people who we attach to, we connect to, we feel deeply connected to, yeah. uh, that loss, the grief is part of it. I think the guilt and, and maybe anger is part of that process. But once you realize that everybody's journeys are their own journeys to live, it's not our job to force, you know, right. convince or uh, save people from their own struggles, then we can step on to, to our own journey and reach our full potential. That's right, that's right. And I always say if you're not if you're not fulfilled and healed within yourself, you cannot possibly heal someone else. You know, not right. not not in that extent anyway. You may you may try to, you may attempt to, but you wouldn't you wouldn't give them your full potential. That can only come if you're if you're on a healing journey within yourself and you're in a good place, you know, internally, uh, in order to project that to somebody else. And you may have noticed that as well. Once you begin this kind of healing journey, suddenly you 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 automatically reflect this different aura about you. You don't have to even work about it. People no. actually pick up on that. Oh, that person is full of positivity. Is full of strength, it's full of joy, we want to actually uh, catch a ray of sunshine uh, from this person and embrace it to our own life. And that's what, what, what is beautiful about that and what creates, makes your perspective even more beautiful. Because you start feeling these differences, you start feeling people who 
you're actually drawn to you, you want him to be healed. You don't have to approach yeah. them no more. And that's 100%. when the difference, the transition comes about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm that you emit a frequency of, of high vibrations of love and abundance and expansion and and you attract people like like who, who need healing, uh, ultimately, uh, narcissists most specifically. Um, but then again, you know, you also attract people who who are as well in alignment with their authentic self. And then life becomes, uh, you know, the way I, the term I like to use is the flow. You start to go with the flow and you start to attract the life of your dreams. And this is available to anybody. You know, I'm not a special species of person that, that you know, like yourself, we're just human beings That's who were right. forced into this experience and we made the best of it. And the, the, the results, the rewards are, are infinitely awesome and, and abundant. And, uh, and that's my wish for everybody is that they, they realize that, you know, your trauma is not a punishment and the abuse was not something indicative of your value of yeah. your self-worth. It's simply a process that, that once we go through and we heal, we can look back and be like, I'm not grateful for the people who hurt me, but I appreciate the struggle because now I'm in a better place. That's right, absolutely. I mean, if we're talking about other people, I think it's very, very few people who actually reach that journey to come out themselves. You know, a lot of people do need help. They do need someone who facilitates this, this journey with them. Or maybe just, I describe that as, uh, although we're all adults as such, but um, we're, still, we're still kind of children in our own way. You know, we want to be taken care of. We want to be nurtured. We want that um, mummy or daddy figure who holds our hand, uh, who reaches out, who just says, it's okay. It's okay. Just follow me or just come with me and everything will be okay. That's what we want to hear, ideally. And uh, it takes very few people who actually then take that journey themselves because they don't have any other support to, to come out of that because they have this drive. I don't want to live like this no more. There's, right. there's, there's better ways to that. I don't have to go through the suffering. I want to come out of that. But um, that is why we're here, like of you and me. I'm a mind coach. I've developed that from, from my psychological background. That, um, you know, you, you then find people in your, in your client's um, base who actually do need this support. And although they know about it intellectually, um, but um, may not have the courage to do so, or may just don't know which way to go or how to step out, for instance. So you're, you're, you're showing them a reflection, I'm guessing, um, or just, just some pathways that it is possible and yeah. I will come in your journey. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And the first, the first step is believing that it's possible. So if you once you believe it's possible, that actually creates the uh, the, the courage and the power and the uh, the strength to do that. So uh, yeah, my my influence and my hope is to influence people to first understand that it's possible because I'm living proof and not just for me for you. And once you can once that light bulb goes off, suddenly you uh, you're willing to invest in something that you believe will have a positive outcome. That's, that's right, that's right. Is there any story which actually um, inspired you as such, working with a client, maybe something which you, um, you know, some some stories sometimes have become memorable for us, yeah. um, which we can't forget. Would you like to share something like this without disclosing yeah. any kind of details about the person? For sure. Yeah, I, every single one uh, is inspiring. Uh, it blows my mind every single time somebody paradigm shifts and, and, and you know, uh, and transforms, it, it is, it is, it's like magic and, and it never ceases to amaze me. So I don't know if there's one specific one, uh, you know, the, uh, the ones that, that really, uh, I guess you can say impress me or influence me are the ones who are able to turn their pain into, into influence, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like myself, I see that in other people and I'm like, I guess that's what I'm doing, but, you know, to, to not only not be a victim, but to have enough, enough, uh, forgiveness and compassion to not aim at revenge, but rather take all that energy and create a force for the good like yourself, you know, it, it's inspiring because I think the world desperately needs more people like that. It's one thing to overcome it. It's another thing to use all that, that, that frustration, that anger, even that hate, that shame, that rage, all that energy, and then just channel it into just changing the world for the better. Uh, I think that once you're in that space, it's just powerfully almost impossible to stop force. So that when I see that, and, and there are a couple of different people who I who have been in that way, and it's it just uh, 
it, it's just a special place in my heart when I see people do that. <laughs> it must must liberate you as such. It must make you happy, you know, yeah. um, creating a joyful moment. Um, I mean, once you once you then went into your um, relationship with your with your wife now, um, and uh, you've recently now married. Is that right? Correct. Um, I've that is correct. Followed that as well. Um, huh. And you have a you have a beautiful child. How yes. did that um, transition emotionally? Oh, how did you go through that transition emotionally? I mean, there must be various emotion skills, especially because when you're on the healing journey of this um, these experiences. Um, you must have gone through a lot of things, you know, thinking about the child coming back with um, flashback memories from your past of your childhood, how your mother has been towards you. And um, how did that uh, develop as such? Or did, did you not have these emotions at that time? Yeah, absolutely. I did. It was not easy. You know, commitment is tough. Uh, uh, you know, relationships are tricky and they bring up stuff. But you know, it's not just about how I feel in the moment that's bringing me into this rela these relationships. It's what I know uh, I'll be able to give and what I know it'll help me become. So it's, it's, at times it's not easy. At times it absolutely sucks, but I don't define the relationship based on those moments. I see that as a necessary experience to, to confront myself and to become more of who I was meant to be. So I'm the, I'm the luckiest man in the world to have these beautiful souls around me uh, who support me and my growth and ultimately allow me to uh, be myself and, and, and support me on my journey. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's tough, but also um, it's incredibly joyous and, 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 and healing because for the longest time I was desperately alone as a child specifically. So just to know that people are around me and that support me specifically, you know, like yourself on the, on, on the social media groups. And I know it's random strangers, but uh, their support means a lot because uh, a lot of them open up their hearts. And uh, so just to have that support system around me, uh, it's it's so encouraging and empowering, uh, and it's just just encouraging me to to do more and more. You know. No, that's lovely to hear. I mean, I remember a quote which Dr. Charlie Cartwright um, a quote he said the other day. I did I did have a podcast with him as well. Are you aware of him? Does, does that name ring a bell? He's an international business consultant and a human influencer expert. As such, he deals with big companies you know, improving, sustaining um, their, their relationship with each other and um, creating healthier environment within. So he, he said in one of his uh, short clips, which he does, it's called um, dashcam.com, which he has on YouTube, and that uh, if a person is in the wrong place, in the wrong environment, then instead of thriving, um, they cannot actually fulfill their full potential because other people are maybe suppressing it or the environment is suppressing it or maybe even, um, you know, when you're, when you're going through various abusive relationships. And that is a very good example that once you come out of that and you are now surrounded by good, healthy um, people with who are actually supporting you and allowing yourself to be and encouraging you in, uh, in being in a healthy dynamic as such, that you then start to thrive but uh, also at the same time it's not just about the environment it's also about yourself which you mentioned that you have to actually create that step you know shift that focus from the negative focus to the positive focus and then create and attract um these these people around you otherwise it wouldn't be wouldn't be possible so the first step has to come from yourself and sometimes we do need a lot of encouragement from other people at the right time, at the right place, in order to do so, uh, where others can maybe do, do it on their own. I personally didn't have any support from anyone, so I had to learn it the hard way. But um, I just yeah. wanted, wanted, wanted a better life for me and my children and generally my environment, because I thought that can't be the answer. You know, you don't have to right. live like this. And uh, me coming also from an Asian background, there's a lot of shame involved in cultural ways, cultural reasons as well, where you think you, you was married before, then you went into a second relationship and it didn't work out. So what are you going to say to your family or how, how are they going to react? And everybody would be telling me I should be suppressing these stories because it would be a shame on me, it would be a shame on my children. 
But then I thought, no, I want to break out of that. We need to talk about it. And you mentioned that before. If you don't talk about it openly, how are you going to be in this healing process? Because you would be still suppressing these things and feeling a form of guilt or shame. Uh, and there's, there's nothing to be ashamed about because it's part of your journey. It's part of who you are. And uh, if that can then help other people as well while they're listening to you, it's even better because it's creating a both ways um, a healing environment, you know, something which is which is creating positivity in the world. And we should be coming out with these things more and more. It shouldn't be a stigma. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that we should all be sharing our experiences, even, even though it's painful, I think that and difficult because maybe we want to keep to ourselves. I think that when we become comfortable sharing our experience and, and connecting in this way, it removes the shame and in and shame dies when there's when there's uh, when there's uh, light. So the more we share, the more we express. And again, that's that's why I do what I do. It sounds like that's uh, like the same with you. Um, so I agree, and and I'm that's what makes me so so happy and feel so fulfilled is that my story, which I was ashamed of and hid for so long, I can I can I can express it. And if people don't resonate with it, that's okay. But most people are finding that it's very empowering. No, absolutely. And how did you then create it, this um, a therapy center, which you're actually offering? What is it about exactly? I know it's, it's mainly channeled um, for, for people who approach you who've gone through narcissistic abuse. But uh, if you could, uh, you know, just explain this um, practicality. Sure. Well, uh, thank you for asking. And, and yes, we, we started our uh, Magnolia Healing Center with me, my, myself and, and Lauren, my wife. And it is in the beginning stages and it's, it's in its infancy, um, but it promises to be a, a eventually a specific brick and mortar location that's going to have a, several different modalities of healing. You know, my specific role is as the coach slash therapist for wounds, for relationship trauma, uh, for, for, for narcissism, narcissistic abuse. But, you know, the way I see it is, is that I want to create uh, my partner. I want to create a place that I would have benefited from had uh, during my struggle. Uh, I can uh, only imagine the amount of people who are stuck in places that I was forced to uh, be. I, and I, I would love to be able to create a space where they can get through this process quickly and efficiently and move on with their lives because so many people can't and are stuck with these wounds and it holds them back from their full potential. So, uh, you know, the Magnolia tree, which it's, it's, it's actually the state of Mississippi, that's their, that's their tree. Um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a reflection of the type of environment. It's, it's, it's a strong, big tree, but it's got these beautiful flowers with, within the leaves. You know, we are strong people. We are courageous people, but we all got that, that child self, that innocent, beautiful little child that needs nurturing. And when we do, we can really, really revitalize our life and live the life of our dreams. I think that's possible for anybody. And that's really what I hope to accomplish. What we hope to accomplish uh, using the center. And I'm sure you will do that. I can see the compassion in you. And that is what is um, important for people also to see. And I'm sure your clients see that as well by listening, you know, listen, uh, looking at the testimonials that you also have on your profile, which is so beautifully said. It just demonstrates how you actually um, uh, put your heart into that, your heart and soul into these things and wanting to um, create um, uh, or change life as such. But um, is that where it came about then? Magnolia name uh, from the Magnolia tree. That is quite. That's exactly right. 100%. So it has a very very strong foundation, but when it branches out, it's got these very delicate, beautiful branches and flowers, um, which yeah. which can which need to be nurtured, which can be damaged. Is that right? Absolutely. That's exactly right. So it's this really robust tree. Uh, it's very strong trunk and these flowers that come out of the leaves. I've never really seen anything like it. So 100%, I feel like it, it, it represents kind of what we're hoping to accomplish with, with everyone uh, that comes by. That, that's lovely to hear. And do you have certain um, programs which you offer them? I mean, you, you touched on, um, you know, relationship abuse uh, problems and narcissistic abuse. Do you have different kind of programs in your practice already established or are you still in the process of doing so? Yeah, well, there's going to be different people that we uh, employ and, and, and get on board, uh, you know, different maybe Reiki healers, energy healers. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I guess my department is going to be more of the psychological, spiritual. But absolutely, we're going to find as many different avenues that can, can help people feel, again, understood. I think Lauren wants to have 
uh, you know, sort of equine therapy or even animal or cow therapy, which is, which is a whole, a whole thing there, which can be very healing. So we, we want to just every way in which we can help people just get in touch with that child self, um, is going to be, is going to be part of this, uh, part of this process. That sounds very interesting to give people options as well, because I will also say not, not every method works for everyone. Exactly. Um, some, some, some people, um, for some people, one works where the other one doesn't. For instance, I started doing a few months ago uh, yoga exercises, but I yeah. just take out the Beautiful. exercise. I just take out the exercises which work for me. So I don't follow the yeah. traditional yoga, um, uh, you know, um, 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 full form as such. I just take out certain exercises which work for me because I find them more sustainable and I enjoy them. And I look yeah. forward in doing them every morning. And which may work then one doesn't work for the other one. So it's lovely to see that you're all thinking of different ways of um, approaching and helping people. That's that's wonderful. So yes, no, thank you very much for being on my show. It's been I actually quite um yes, lovely to hear. Uh, and I think the audience will have more idea about, more clarity about what actually a narcissist means. Uh, you know, uh, I think it's very important um, because people do ask me many times the question, what is it actually? And when I explain it to them in clinical terms, they, or even my own experiences, sometimes it's too overwhelming and they can't really understand what, what it actually means, how much of the impact it can have and how these characteristics are defined to maybe other uh, abusive um, personalities um, or personality disorders. But um, thank you for shedding light onto that and engaging with me in this dialogue. Uh, I think a lot of people will have a lot more clarity about this. And I wish you all the best with your, with your practice. And I'm pretty sure it will be a great success, especially the heart and passion which I can see in you, uh, which you're putting into that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will help a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words. And thanks for having me on your show. And uh, it's been an honor. And uh, I'm happy that we did this and we can we do it again. <laughs> That's wonderful. Of course, of course. I mean, stay in touch. Um, sure. And yes, um, yes, keep me updated about, about your career pathway and your practice. It would be lovely to know I'm developing my business with uh, mind coaching, being excellent but in emotional intelligence and, you know, then creating in a similar way, not just um, focusing on narcissistic abuse as such, but focusing on the struggles which people may have to um, surpass and get to their full potential. Because the best way you can do what you do in your way as well is the, the journey of self-discovery. That's, that's a lovely thing to have. Because many people are afraid. What is going on in our mind? We don't understand why we're reacting yeah. or acting in a certain way. Once 100%. you start understanding that, that's when the life becomes beautiful and flowery and light and bright and warm and gloomy. You start seeing the beauty. I couldn't agree more. I love that. Thank you for, thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. And all the best. Of and yes, stay in touch would be lovely absolutely and i will let you know when uh, this podcast will be released um i do that every week i release another podcast on my on my youtube channel and on linkedin but i will surely um send you a link and also tag you into that so all the best Perfect. and have a lovely day yes thank you and very quickly is are you comfortable if i shared it on my podcast yes uh, of Okay, good. Do you have the audio? Because obviously it's, it's not visual. Do you just have the audio? If you do, uh, that'd be good. I can just. I have it. both of them. What I do, I, it's a video recording, but I do sure. have an audio version of that as well. I can send you both of them. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, good, good. That'd be, that'd be helpful. One, Thank one you so much. That. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. that. For sure. Take <laughs> okay. care. Shafiq. You too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.